Hello everyone. This session I would like to share with you about the second order non-homogeneous linear differential equation with the constant coefficient using the method of undetermined coefficient. Do you still remember what is non-homogeneous? Non-homogeneous is when the linear differential equation equal to the fx and this fx is not equal to zero. That's why we call it as a non-homogeneous. There are two methods to solve the non-homogeneous um, linear differential equation. That is the undetermined coefficient and the variation parameter. So we, uh, but in this course, we only uh, share with you how to solve it using the undetermined coefficient. And this is the procedure to solve using the method of undetermined coefficient. So first of all, we need to find the complementary function y c. C is referred to the complementary. Okay. Then second, we need to find the particular integral y p. You only need to find this yp when it is a non-homogeneous linear differential equation. If it is homogeneous, you only need to find the complementary function only. And this is the step to find the yp. First of all, you assume the yp based on the fx. So in the question, it must give you some fx value. So you need to assume the yp based on the fx. And this table is used for you to assume the yp. So there are three cases. Case one is the exponent, in which the example of the fx, because uh, the question will give you a uh, differential equation. So you determine whether it's homogeneous or non-homogeneous based on the fx value. So the fx value is, uh, you see whether this fx is similar to this type or not, whether it's the exponent, whether our polynomial or trigonometry. Okay, so this is an example. If the fx given in the question, if the k exponent and x, then you assume your yp is c, e, and x. Or case 2 is a polynomial. Polynomial means it's k only, a constant only. So your yp is a c. Okay, or kx, your yp will be cx plus d. Or kx squared, your yp will be cx squared plus dx plus e. Okay, and the trigonometry either is a k sine and x or k cos and x, you will get yp is a c cos and x plus d sine and x. So this is the, for you to assume the yp. Then you go back to the previous slide. After you have assumed the yp, you check the yp if the same pattern with yc. yc is from the first step, okay, from the first step. So if yes, multiply the yp with x. If the same pattern occur again, multiply the yp with the x again and again until the pattern is not the same. Okay, later I will show you an example. How do we compare the pattern with the yc? Okay, after you get the yp, then next you get the yp prime and yp double prime. Means that you differentiate the yp, you get yp prime. Differentiate uh, yp prime, you get yp double prime. Okay, then you substitute the yp prime and yp double prime into the equation and obtain the value of cd. Okay, c and d is based on the, this one, from your assumed table, c and d. Okay. Then we go back to the first procedure. Okay, so after that, you go to the step number three. Find the general solution, y equal to yc plus yp. So it means that from the step one, you get the yc. From the step two, you get the yp. So step three is the general solution. So you must write this one. 
general solution equal to yc plus yp. And then step number four is to consider the initial condition. Okay. Now let's look at the example 2.4. Find the general solution for y double prime minus 6y prime plus 9y equal to negative 2 exponent 3x. So this is the question, y double prime minus 6y prime plus 9y equal to negative 2 exponent 3x. So this one, we call it a function of fx. Okay, this is we call fx. Okay, for the first step, you need to find the yc. Okay, you need to find the yc. Okay, so you have, based on this one, you have, you convert to m square, uh, six, minus 6 y square, you convert to minus 6 m, uh, plus 9 y, you convert to plus 9, equal to 0. You equal to 0 first, okay? You equal to 0 first, because you want to find the homogeneous. You assume it a uh, homogeneous first. Y, C, uh, comp uh, find the yc, find, or we call it as a complementary function, means that we assume it as a homogeneous uh, equation first. Okay, although the question given here is a non-homogeneous, but for the first step to find the yc, you assume this equation is equal to zero. Okay, Equ equal to zero first. Okay, next you factorize it. How to factorize? How to get this m squared minus 6, m plus 9. So m minus uh, times with m, you get m squared. For 9, you 3 times 3, you get 9. So plus, uh, uh, minus and minus, sorry. Minus and minus, you get plus. So m equal to 3. This one also m equal to 3. So this one you can get from the uh, formula. You get the formula from the previous lecture or you can get it from the homogeneous uh, linear differential table. That is this one, second order homogeneous linear differential equation. So you refer to here. So just now the m is equal to 3 and another m root 1 equal to 3, root 2 also equal to 3. So it means that it's a real and equal. So it is a case number 2. So it's a case 2. Your yc is equal to a plus bx exponent mx. Okay, so you substitute the value of m. m is 3, so exponent 3x. Or then you can multiply in, so you have a exponent 3x plus bx exponent 3x. Okay, so this is done for the yc, for the homogeneous part. Okay, next step is to find the yp for the non-homogeneous. Okay, you still remember your y fx here? Your fx is negative 2 exponent 3x. So your fx is negative 2 exponent 3x. So this one is a exponent. Do you still remember this table? So this table is for assume the yp. Okay, exponent, just now I told you it's an exponent because your fx is negative 2 exponent 3x. So which one you match to an exponent? Only this one, cas one, has the exponent. So your yp is c 
e c exponent n x. So this one belongs to case one. So your y p equal to c e and x. So your n you can use back the three. So this value you can take it from here. Okay, class. Next step is what? Okay, just now you have assumed the YP. And next step, you'll check if the same pattern with YC, right? Okay, if same, you need to multiply with X again and again. So this is your YP. And where is your YC? Okay, this is your YC. So you check the pattern. Is it the same? Okay, C exponent 3x, A exponent 3x. So this one is the same. A and C is just a constant. We are talking about the, you compare the exponent 3x. So same. So this one and this one are the same. So you need to multiply with x. So now your yp equal to when you, okay, now let me write like this. So this one, yp same as yc. Now your yp, you multiply with the x. So cx exponent 3x. Then you check again. Cx exponent 3x, you compare with this yc, okay? Bx exponent 3x, so again, it's the same. This part, same as this part. Okay, the whole thing, I would say the whole thing, same as the bx. So it's the same, so we cannot, we, again, you change to cx squared. You multiply the whole yp, with the x again. So you get c x squared exponent 3x. So this one is not the same with yc. The second one is still the same, so cannot. So this is the final value of the yp. Okay, next step is find the yp prime and yp double prime. This means that you need to differentiate the yp that you obtain in step two, okay, and differentiate a second time again. So your yp is cx squared exponent 3x. Since you have a two variable, uh, two x in this yp equation yp, so you need to use the product rules. So first of all, I assume the u equal to cx squared and v equal to exponent 3x, okay? So du dx is equal to, you differentiate u, you get 2cx, and v is exponent 3x, dv dx is equal to 3 exponent 3x. Okay, so this is uh, yp prime, okay? So u v prime plus v u prime. This is equal to u is c x square. V prime is three exponent three x plus v is exponent three x. U prime is two c x. Okay, so we can take it out the exponent three x. Now we left the c x squared and the 3. So 3c three x squared plus with 2cx.
So after you complete the yp prime, you have to differentiate again to get the yp double prime. So this one I multiply in So I take it from here, okay? I take it from here, I get uh, cx squared 3 exponent 3x plus exponent 3x 2cx. Okay, then I assume this one is a u, this one is a v. Okay, u is cx squared, the u prime or du dx is equal to 2cx. All right? Then V is 3 exponent 3x and the V prime equal to 3, 3 exponent 3x. Okay. Again, you use the product rule UV prime plus VU prime. So now you get the CX square. V prime is 9. Oh, I don't want to say 9. I can just copy down. Plus 3 exponent 3x, 2cx. Okay, I can take out the value of 3 exponent 3x. Okay, here and here. So left 3cx square plus 2cx. So this one just the first part only. For the first part. Now we need to settle the second part. The second part, I assume this one is P, this one is Q, right? So P is exponent 3x. So P prime is equal to 3 exponent 3x. And Q equal to 2CX. Then Q prime equal to 2C. So P, Q prime plus Q, P prime. So this is the product rules again. Then you will get exponent 3X, 2C. Plus with 2CX, 3 exponent 3X. So you can take out the exponent 3X. 2c plus 6cx. Okay, so for the y double prime, yp double prime, is the summation of this one plus uh, this one. So 3 exponent 3x 3cx squared plus 2cx plus the exponent 3x, 2c plus 6cx. So you can simplify it. You get 9cx squared. Okay, you multiply in this one, you get 6cx plus with uh, 2c plus with 6CX. All right. CX and CX, you can also can simplify. Now you get 9CX squared plus 12CX plus 2C. Okay, so this is the YP. This is the Y, eh, sorry, this is the YP double prime. Okay, this is the yp double prime. Now we go back to the procedure step number four. Substitute the yp prime and yp double prime into the equation, the differential equation. So this differential equation refer to the question that you that given to you, and obtain the value of c and d. Okay, so the question given to you is. Y double prime minus 6y prime 
plus 9y negative 2 exponent 3x. So you substitute. So now you have the y double prime equal to exponent 3x, 9cx squared plus 12cx plus 2, 2c, this, this one. Okay, and then minus 6y, okay, minus 6y. So this 6y is from the y prime. So where is the y prime? Okay, so your y prime is this value, exponent 3x, 3cx squared plus 2cx. So you have minus 6, 3cx squared plus 2cx. Okay, then plus with 9y. So this 9y, you use the letters yp. Okay. So 9y. Equal to negative 2 exponent 3x. Okay, use the letters yp. So now you can solve it or simplify it. You get exponent 3x. So you multiply in everyone. Six times three, so you have eighteen. Eighteen. Okay, so this is exponent 3x, so I take out the exponent 3x. So 18 cx squared plus with 6 times 2, 12 cx. Okay, also I take out the exponent 3x, so you plus with exponent 3x, and I only left 9 cx squared. equal to negative 2 exponent 3x. So now you can simplify it. 9cx squared minus 18 and then uh, plus with 9. So all equal to 0. And then for the cx, you have 12, 12 cx minus with 12 cx o equal to 0 again. And then this one, 2c, this one, no, don't have anything to compare. So now you have exponent 3x, you just have 2c equal to negative 2 exponent 3x. So your c value Okay, your c value equal to negative 2 exponent 3x divided by 2 exponent 3x. So equal to negative 1. So your c is equal to negative 1. So your yp equal to cx squared exponent 3x. So for the yp, you, you can check back your yp. Your yp is cx squared exponent 3x. Right? So your c is equal to negative 1. Alright, you get the c value. Next, we go back to the uh, general solution. 
So general solution equal to y equal to yc plus yp. yc is a plus bx exponent 3x plus yp is negative x squared exponent 3x. Okay. So every time you must do until you get the general solution. Okay. So that's all. Thank you for watching. Thank you. If you like my video, you can like my YouTube video. Thank you.